Do you have one of these basic irrigation controllers? Well, today I'm going to show you how to make this basic controller into a smart one. I've been using this irrigation controller for the past few years now. And don't get me wrong, it works just fine. It's just a little bit annoying. Its interface is not that user friendly and it always loses time, no matter how many times I have replaced the battery. And worst of all, it doesn't have any Wi-Fi capabilities. Now if I want to give it some Wi-Fi capabilities, I basically need to replace the entire thing and they are quite expensive. Luckily, while I was busy looking for Wi-Fi switches for the doghouse I built in my previous video, I found this little piece of magic. And if you haven't seen that video yet, please go and watch it. I'll link it up here. Now, it's a Wi-Fi switch just like the ones I used in the doghouse, with one little difference, and that is that it can be powered by a DC voltage between 7 and 32 volts, making it perfect because the Hunter controller used a 24 volt power supply, meaning that I can basically just swap it out with the Hunter controller without running any new cables or getting any new power supplies. And to make it even better, it only cost me $10. Now the Wi-Fi switch comes in several different versions. You can get one that works with the 2U or EWI Link app. And you can decide if you want one with one, two or even four channels. And it can work with Google Assistant and Alexa. Now I needed the EWI Link version with only two channels. But the setup and wiring will be basically the same for all of them. My current controller sits outside in a waterproof enclosure. Now I want to reuse the enclosure, so my first step was to disconnect the old one, remove it from the enclosure to reinstall the new one within it. To make it a little bit easier, I'll be using a small terminal block to split the 24 volt power to the controller and solenoids. With the enclosure empty, I marked out where the new components will be and drilled a few mounting holes and mounted everything. I then used some 20 gauge silicon wire and bootlace ferrules to make all of the connections. First making two leads to supply the 24 volts from the power supply to the terminal block. Then to power the controller, I made two leads from the terminal block to the controller. And to power each solenoid valve, I made a lead for each relay from the terminal block to the relay's normally open terminal. And to test everything, I connected a power supply and a spare solenoid valve that I had lying around to one of the channels. One lead going to the COM terminal of the relay and the other lead to the negative side of the terminal block. The connection for the second valve will look exactly the same. Just connect the one lead to the COM terminal of the second relay and the other lead to the last open terminal on the terminal block. To test the switch, I turn on the power supply and use a multimeter to check if the switch receives 24 volts. I then manually activate the relays of the controller and check that each relay supplies 24 volts. With everything working, we can now pair the device in the EWI Link app. To pay the device, you need to download the EWI Link app and create an account. Once the app is ready, press one of the relay buttons for 5 seconds to switch it into pairing mode. Then open the app, tap the plus button on the top right corner and select add device. One thing to note is that your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth has to be turned on and you have to be connected to a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi connection. The device cannot be connected to a 5 GHz Wi-Fi signal. Now enter your Wi-Fi's logging details and press next. Wait a while until the app picks up your device. Once found, press the blue add button. And when added, press next. You can now change the name of your device and press next again. And that's it, you're done. Now just to test if it paired correctly. Mm -hmm. 
One thing to mention, if you're starting this project from scratch and not just replacing the controller like I did, with the Wi-Fi switch, you'll also need some solenoid valves and a dedicated power supply. Just get a power supply that supplies the correct voltage for your solenoid valves. But don't worry, I'll link all of the components you need in the description below. Now with the setup done, the only thing left to do is to install it and check if it actually works with my sprinkler system. Okay, done. Now the moment of truth. <laughs> oh, this is magical. This is by far the easiest project I've done in a while. If you want to see more DIY videos like this one, go and subscribe there. And if you haven't seen any of my other videos, please go and watch this one. Until next time, thank you for watching. And it looks like I'm not going to be needing this anymore.